So we are going to introduce the concept of indices in modular arithmetic and go over some of the basic properties. To start off, let's talk about how indices are related to primitive roots. Let's suppose we have some integer g, which is a primitive root mod p. One of the properties that we can derive from that is that all of the powers of g, so g, g squared, g cubed, all the way up to g to the power of p minus 1, those are all incongruent mod p. What that means is that for any number a that is not a multiple of p, we know that we can write a as congruent to g to the k for some power k, because those powers g to the k include all the possible congruences except for 0. When we have this congruence being true, when we have some number a being congruent to g to the k, we say that the index of the number a relative to the primitive root g is k. Now, in order to get a better understanding of what exactly is going on here, I'm going to introduce a certain notation that's used for indices that makes the idea a little easier to understand. We often talk about the index of a relative to g using this notation, log base g of a. Now the reason that we use the notation log base g of a is equal to k, where k is our index, is that it follows the same structure that we expect of logarithms. So if we think about taking this notation here, log base g of a, and putting it into this congruence, what we get is a is congruent to g to the power of log base g of a mod p. And this is exactly what we expect from a logarithm. It sort of inverts the idea of exponentiation. And because both standard logarithms and indices relate to taking exponents of a particular base, they actually share many of the same properties. So indices will often behave similarly to the way you'd expect a logarithm to behave. Let's go through a few of those rules here. First of all, like we set up here, suppose we have some number a which has an index of k relative to g. And further, let's suppose we have some other number b, and this number b has an index of n mod p. The question is, what would be the index of a times b? Well, we know there's a multiplication rule for modular arithmetic, so we can multiply the left and right sides, and what we're going to get is a b is congruent to g to the k times g to the n. But there's an addition rule when we multiply two exponents. That's the same as taking g to the power of k plus n mod p. So notice that we've multiplied the two numbers, and what we get as a result is the index is k plus n. So we've added the two indices. In order to understand better how this relates to the ideas from standard logarithms, we're going to rewrite this congruence using the notation of logarithms. In this case, what we're talking about here is what is the index of a times b. And we can write the index of a times b as log base g of a times b for that primitive root g. What we've shown here is that this is equal to k plus n. In this case, k is the index of a, and n is the index of b. So this is a rule that you probably recognize from algebra. Log of a b equals log of a plus log of b. And that's because the idea of indices is related to exponents in a very similar way to standard logarithms. Now another thing that I'll point out here is that when we talk about indices of a number relative to some primitive root, we often specify that that index has to be between 0 and p minus 1. So if we do some kind of index addition like this, and we get a number that's greater than p minus 1, what we do is reduce it p minus 1. So really the answer here would be log of a plus log of b mod p minus 1. And we can do that because by Fermat's little theorem, we know that g to the p minus 1 is always going to be congruent to 1 mod p. So if we subtract p minus 1 from that exponent, it's not going to change our answer. Now we're going to look at another property that relates to what happens when we take numbers to a particular power. So say that the index of a relative to g 
is k. What would happen if we take both sides of this congruence and raise it to the power of some number r? So we have a to the power of r is congruent to, if we take g to the k and then to the power of r, we'll have g to the r times k, since we can multiply those exponents. Now we can rewrite this again in terms of the log notation that we see over here. The index that we're looking for is the index relative to g of a to the power of r. And what we see is that's equal to r times k. Now k is the index of a. So we can write this as r times the index relative to g of a. And again, this is what we would expect from logarithms, that we can take the exponent inside this log and bring it out to the front as a constant that we multiply. Now finally, let's take a look at a few examples of indices and use the rules that we've just derived. Let's say we're looking mod 11. So we choose our prime p to be 11. And in that case, I'll tell you that one of the primitive roots of 11 is 2. So we'll choose the primitive root for our indices to be g equals 2. In that case, in order to figure out the index of some arbitrary number, one of the things that we can do is list out what are the powers of 2 when we take each one mod 11. So here I've taken all of the powers of 2 from 1 to 10 and then reduced each one mod 11. As an example, let's say we wanted to find the index relative to 2 of 5. In order to do that, we would look at this sequence and find where is the 5, which will occur exactly once in this sequence. We see that it happens right here, and that's with 2 to the power of 4. So we can write that 5 is congruent to 2 to the 4 mod 11, and that is the definition of the index of 5 relative to 2. So we know the index of 5 relative to 2, that's going to be 4. We can also look at, for example, the index of 7 relative to 2. If we do that, that's going to show up over here with 2 to the power of 7 as a coincidence there. And now let's take a look at some of the rules that we've seen here. First of all, what is the index relative to 2 of 5 times 7, which is 35? Well, first of all, in order to make that problem easier, we know that 35 is greater than 11, which means that we can reduce it mod 11. And that won't change whether it's congruent to a particular power of 2. So we know that the index relative to 2 of 35 is the same as the index relative to 2 of 35 mod 11. If we subtract 33, that's going to leave us with 2. So immediately we can see that this result is going to be 1 because of course 2 to the first power is equal to 2. But we also know that when we multiply two numbers, in this case 5 times 7, that's also going to give us the index of 5 plus the index of 7. Let's see what we get if we try that. Notice the index of 5 is 4 and the index of 7 is 7. If we add those two, we're going to get 11. But remember, like we said earlier in the video, when we have an index that's greater than p minus 1, which in this case is 10, we can reduce it mod p minus 1 to get an index between 0 and 10. So if we reduce 11 mod 10, obviously that's going to give us the result of 1. And so we see that both directly and through this multiplication rule, we get the result that the index of 2 relative to 2 is equal to 1. Now let's look at an example with exponentiation. Let's say we wanted to find the index relative to 2 of 7 to the 4th power. First, let's do it directly. If we figure out what is 7 to the 4th power, it ends up being 2,401. And we know that we can reduce the number in here, mod 11, to get something that's easier to work with. And if we reduce 2,401 mod 11, the result that we get is 3. So we want the index of 3 relative to the primitive root 2, and that ends up being 8. So our result here is 8. But we can also do this using the multiplication rule that we see here. We know the index of 7 is 7. So the index of 7 to the 4th, that's going to be we can pull the power out to the front 4 times the index of 7. 
So right here, the index of 7 is 7. So we're looking at 4 times 7, which is 28. But we can reduce the result mod p minus 1. So if we reduce 28 mod 10, which is 11 minus 1, the result that we get is, of course, 8. And so both ways, we see that the index of 2,401 relative to 2 is 8. So because the powers of a primitive root give us all of the possible residues mod a prime number except for 0, we can express any of those numbers mod p as a power of that primitive root. And that lets us use a lot of the rules that we would expect from the algebra of logarithms in order to find indices relative to that primitive root.